Hey guys, Dr. Dobson, and here's a couple more cavities that we did last week. This is a first premolar. Uh, this patient came into the office complaining of sensitivity in the upper left quadrant, and it turned out that they had a couple of larger cavities, so we're going to be going over how we fix them in this video. First one was on the second premolar, so there's a photo of the cavity there, so we're going to do a half a cartridge of anesthetic into that tooth. And then we're going to do a half a cartridge of anesthetic into the first premolar there. And here's a photo of that one. Both of these are pretty deep cavities and the patient was complaining of sensitivity to cold and to sweet. Both of the nerves were still vital at the time that we did the fillings. I'm going to put some freezing in the roof of the mouth here so the rubber dam clamp doesn't pinch. And another one on the premolar and canine. There's a cavity on the canine tooth as well that we're going to be getting to in this video so it's going to be three fillings in this one both of the uh going to get a rubber dam on here both of the teeth tested vital the nerves and um there was no no lingering pain to cold so uh we were fairly optimistic that we would be able to save both of the teeth from needing root canal and we're going to put on the rubber dam here from second premolar to the midline Here's an x-ray of the uh, of the two cavities there. So you can see radiographically a decent amount of clearance between the decay and the nerve. So another little bit that we're, makes us optimistic about the prospect of saving the nerves. And we're going to get started on the second molar first here. Pick out some goodies and then get started with the prep going to put a round diamond on a high speed and get going. So we'll extend our margins of the prep as far wide as we need to until we have clean margins under the enamel, clean DEJ margins, which for me, technique wise is the most important thing. I'm okay with leaving some discolored dentin at the floor of the pulp at the expense of not drilling too deep into the nerve to prevent pulp exposure. And I find that typically, as long as there's no symptoms of irreversible pulpitis, usually able to keep a tooth from flaring up, even with cavities like this. So I'm going to take a slow speed and just work it around the rim of the margin to verify that that area is cleaned thoroughly of any tooth decay and then going with a large round diamond as our last burr still a little bit of discoloration around the rim so we're going to get to that but usually the large round diamond as the last burr to ensure that there's no sharp angles on the interior surface of the prep and then going with our slow speed and cleaning out the DEJ as thoroughly as it needs to be to prevent decay from starting up again. You know, the literature says that as long as the margins are sealed, then tooth decay does not progress because you're basically starving it of starving it of food. So this one's ready to go. We're going to condition the surface of the tooth with a five second phosphoric acid etch, rinse it thoroughly. And then dry the surface of the tooth mostly before applying our material. Going to use Equia Forte for all of these restorations. And the capsule is going to go right from the mixer into the tooth as fast as possible because the stuff is pretty viscous. And then I'll overfill the prep and then pack it in with a moist cotton pellet. <clears throat> And this is a <clears throat> this is a time setting material, so I'll typically, once I've packed it in place, wait for about four minutes for it to set before going and finishing finishing it up. And in this case, since we can jump right on to the next tooth in the quadrant, we're just going to do that. So the second molar is all filled up. We're going to get to um, removing the excess at a later point, but for now, we're going to start on the first 
premolar there, the big cavity. <clears throat> and there's a cavity in the canine. You can see it there clearly. So the premolar, pretty decent amount of tooth missing from, from this one. And there's going to be even more by the time we finish removing the tooth decay. So this is a tooth that I strongly advised a crown for at some point, uh, assuming that the nerve reacted favorably, which actually it has so far. I followed up with the patient after two days and both teeth were asymptomatic. So I'm going to go in with a slow speed and begin removing the soft tooth decay until we're at a point that, you know, it's reasonably reasonably hard on the pulpal floor. That's why I like these uh, small heads on the slow speed. You don't have to put as much pressure. And then we're going to spend the next little bit of time cleaning out the DEJ thoroughly around the rim to prevent any leakage. And we're going to use Equia Forte for this one as well, which is going to perform a lot better than a lot of than it seemed to think it does. Um, I've been using Equia Forte almost exclusively for my load bearing restorations for the last two years, and like I say, I hardly have any redos, fortunately. But it works great. I mean, we're gonna keep uh, keep removing the decay from the rim of the DEJ to prevent leakage. That's another thing about the Equia Forte is that it bonds so tightly to the tooth that there's, you know, perfect marginal integrity on follow-up, I find, and pretty much no leakage. So this one's getting pretty much good to go, and we're fine leaving that last little bit of discolored dentin on the pulpal floor at the advantage of not drilling right into the pulp. And we're just going to <clears throat> matrix the tooth with a Toffelmeyer. So we're going to get it around the tooth and cinch it up tight as we can. And then it's going to be ready to condition. <coughs> Excuse me. Going to dry it off and then apply the conditioner. Five second phosphoric acid etch, which I've read plenty of literature that says that actually this uh, this surface treating technique is just as good as a 15 second scrub with polyacrylic acid. You're going to rinse it off thoroughly and then dry it off mostly. And then we're ready to apply our material. So here in goes the Equia Forte and we're going to overfill overfill the matrix and then pack it down with a moist cotton pellet. And then by the time that we've finished working on this tooth, the filling material on the molar is going to be well set. So I think we're either going to next start removing the excess on the molar filling or going to start on the canine tooth. And you can see the cavity from this aspect on the front side surface there. So we're going to remove the excess from the molar here large round diamond first for the gross reduction and then a and then a carbide on a slow speed for the finishing touches yeah this equia forte material you know, i've done a lot of done a lot of really big uh big buildups and hero fillings and it just seems to work it seems to work well i think it's probably going to start becoming a more popular filling in the future. So just taking down the material on the second molar until we're back onto the natural margins where the prep was. And there we're pretty much pretty much done for the most part until we go back and check the bite.
So by this point, we're going to be able to remove, oh, we're just going to start prepping the canine, it looks like. So going in with a high speed, kind of a small diamond burr, and using indirect vision to remove the decay and being careful and try not to nick the neighboring tooth the incisor and once we have a good outline form then we're going to go in with a slow speed you can use direct vision at this point and just scooping out the majority of the decay until we're back on reasonably hard tooth tissue this was a comparably small cavity didn't go too deep at all this is the type of cavity that would typically not even be symptomatic and that's <clears throat> kind of the things that we would have liked to have gotten to these cavities earlier in this process but that's typically why we like to do checkups every year or two. But we'll open up the contact on the canine here and then we'll be ready to restore the tooth. Just gonna smooth off the edges with a carbide flame. And then we're gonna matrix this tooth with a mylar strip and a wooden wedge. And <coughs> gonna take off the Tolfamar band from the premolar just to get it out of the way before we matrix the canine. And to make a contact in these anterior fillings, because we can't use a separator ring, I'll usually take a wooden wedge and really wedge it in as tightly as I can to separate the teeth and really press hard with the digits and then take a take the end of a metal instrument usually some cotton pliers and push it in more sometimes wiggling it side to side and then pushing it in more waiting a minute or two and then and then forcing it in some more just to get as much separation as possible just kind of pushing up the band against the side of the tooth with a probe and now we're ready to restore the tooth so we're going to Condition it for five seconds with phosphoric acid. Rinse thoroughly. Mostly dry. And then apply our filling material. This is such a small filling that I'm just gonna use a Fuji. And similar technique as always overfilling and then condensing with the moist cotton pellet. And then Fuji, it's nice because it cures immediately with the curing light. So I'm going to zap it a couple of times with the Velo and then begin removing the excess with a large carbide on a slow speed until we're back down on the natural margin and to make the anatomy of the side of the tooth I'll usually use slow speed round burrs and then use a carbide flame <coughs> And then it looks like we removed the rubber dam already. Actually, I didn't catch that, but we'll be checking the bite pretty soon. I guess after we've shaped the premolar. So we're going to use a carbide flame to shape the side of the canine tooth. Try to make reasonably natural looking anatomy.
and we're starting to be satisfied with the shape of the filling on the canine there. Going to check with floss and see that we get a good contact just using the wooden wedge. And now we're going to start shaping the filling on the premolar. This is a large filling for sure on a tooth like this. And it's hard to say how long something like this would last. And I would almost be curious to see how well the Equia Forte would perform. But definitely the type of situation that we advised um, as long as the nerve was healthy and vital after a couple of weeks to strongly advise crowning this tooth just for structural durability. And just shaping, <clears throat> shaping the lingual wall with the carbide flame and then we'll shape the occlusal. I'm going to start checking the bite here. Have the patient bite lightly and slide around and see where the marking is. And we don't see too much, so we're going to have them bite and grind a little bit harder. And we see some contact on the premolar, so we're going to take those contacts down. A little bit on the canine as well there. This is the type of restoration that we definitely want. Half a millimeter or two half a millimeter or one millimeter out of the bite. Going to check the bite again. Take down any high spots. See contact on the canine on that fill in there. So we're going to take that down. And then a little bit of contact on the second molar. So we'll take that a little bit out as well. And then we'll check the bite again, bite down, grind hard, and see just a touch on the molar. And mostly good with the premolar. Bite and grind hard. A little bit more on the canine there. So we'll take that down. Looks like this material, when it's dry, it throws off the white balance of the camcorder. Going to do some more shaping just to make it feel like natural anatomy to the tongue before we coat our filling material with varnish. Equia Forte, not only is it indicated for load-bearing restorations of all sorts, but it's also indicated as a core buildup material. So this type of restoration can be converted right from a definitive restoration to a core buildup material without having to alter the tooth in any way, which is hopefully what we're going to be doing at some point. Going to coat the restorative material after it's dried with a varnish and air thin it before giving a light cure and then that's that's the end of this one so yeah so these did did well for the first couple of days so far but definitely the type of filling that we're going to follow up on to verify that the nerves react positively